On tonight's show, we enjoy live music from the perennially popular B-52s and the astonishingly talented Paddy Lang. Revel in the acerbic wit of Mark Thomas and Dennis Leary, spend a philosophical moment with inebriate Paul Clark, take a walk down memory lane with top male model Jean-Claude, and partake in some scurrilous Hollywood gossip with Bruce and Larry. As if that weren't enough, and of course it isn't, we can bask in the lovely glow given off by tonight's guest star from the smash hit movie Dirty Dancing, Mr. Angus Deaton. We'd like to thank you. Jeanette Mason and Handbag, ladies and gentlemen. Um, good evening. My name's Jonathan. I'm a Scorpio. My favourite film is An Officer and a Gentleman. I like The Long Walks on Rainy Days, Lime Green, and anything by Judy Garland. <laughs> It is, of course, Love Weekend here on Channel 4, ladies and gentlemen, not to be confused with Love Weekend over on BBC Two, because, of course, here, we've got Nina Miskov. <laughs> confused? You will be. Uh, maybe it's just me, but as you get older, it seems to me that all this fuss and nonsense about these little holidays we have, these little card-buying events, it begins to seem sort of pointless. I mean, who really cares about chocolate hearts, and bunches of roses and silly little cards. Who cares if every year you rush downstairs to see what the postman's left on your doorstep and all you get is the gas bill and a free sample of wash and go? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I've been, I've been spending a lot of time in the sun. Yes, Valentine's Day can be a tough time and the big Saturday Zoo variety experience here this week is especially designed to help you get in the kind of romantic, giddy, devil-may-care, dare I say it, gay frame of mind that you'll need. <laughs> <laughs> to get through all the other Valentine's Day crap that's on TV. Now, just because you haven't sent your loved one a Valentine does not mean it's too late we decided that we would offer a special service for those of you who want to get in touch with that special someone. So if you have a romantic message you want to give somebody, or if you want to propose marriage, or ask for divorce, or just register complete indifference, call or fax us now on these numbers. We've got a phone number 071 757 7050, or a fax line on 071 361 uh, In fact, our Valentine's phone lines opened about an hour ago, two hours ago? Two hours ago, and we have some messages already. These are some of them we've received already. Um, uh, what is to a non <laughs> from Tony Lemon and Spa? Happy Valentine to the darling woman I adore. No, not my wife, but the one next door. <laughs> to Tracy from Stuart Fowler, will you marry me? And that's sweet. Aww. Will you marry me? Should really go in and ask her yourself, of course. That's a. <laughs> to Michelle from Simon in Borough, will you marry me? From John Howarth of Lancashire to Barbara, I love you, and will you marry me? Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this romantic? If any of those people want to phone us back by the end of the show and say yes or no. Or, uh, I've never met this person, <laughs> but he's followed me home from work on a regular basis. <laughs> Give us a call on those lines, and if you can get through, I know the lines are really jammed, but try and get through, and we'll pass those messages on. Now, I would like you to please welcome one of the most popular performers on British television. He's appearing as an actor in the phenomenally successful One Foot in the Grave, and in his role as host, adding a pleasingly ironic touch to the proceedings on Have I Got News For You, he is now, more than ever before, Mr Angus Deedon. <laughs> In advance, may I wish you a happy Valentine's Day? Thank you very much, Jonathan. I thought you'd never say so. Did you get any Valentine's this morning? Um, that, literally, I, it was almost impossible to open the front door. <laughs> I mean, the card was so big. Um, <laughs> it could have been from any one of those people that uh, I know who, called, uh, who are called mum. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I, d I, d I didn't receive any this morning oh, at all. Oh, Tish, you must have had yeah. one. No, I didn't receive any. No. How many did you get? Let's move on. Um, <laughs> but there was, I saw, a message, and I don't know where it came from, but in Private Eye, you know, they do their, uh, their kind of classifies in advance of the newspapers, because they're a weekly. Mm. There was a message in Private Eye this morning that said, Angus Deaton, I love you. Was that? Yep. Well, that absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> there it is. I love you, Angus Deaton. Any idea who that no, would be no, from? that's from me. That's, right. uh... <laughs> 
love you. I'm not sure who I was referring to, but yeah. Now, um, mm. now you're a private eye brings us to Ian Hislop, who you work with on Have I Got News For You. I've, I'm curious. It's in the contract. I is, no this, option, <laughs> is this just a good way, working with the man, is it a good way of ensuring that you don't get any bad press, you don't get featured in Private Eye? Is that part well, of Well, no, it? I do get fe featured quite a lot in Private Eye, actually. I was in, um, uh, last week, as, uh, in the Lovey's column um, for saying something about uh, advertising voiceovers, and the week before that, I was in the look-alike look uh, section where... Well, I saw that one. We, we had that one. This was oh, a no. remarkable... Have a look at the monitors here. And have, uh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not so much a look-alike, so but no one's ever seen you in a room at the same time, have they? And yeah, I, think... I think I'm the one on the right, actually. But, uh... And of course, you'll be performing at Wembley Arena soon, I believe, yes, with the rest I'm of the gladiators. With Ulrika and John. Now, mm. this might be an, uh, uh, an issue that's boring you rapidly, and if it is, we'll, we'll no, move I'm on. I'm happy to stay. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, recently I've seen a lot of press. I believe it started in the London's listing magazine, referring to you as TV's Mr. Sex. That's what they call you. Mm. Like it or not, you're TV's Mr. Sex. A title which I probably inherited from you. I I honest, you were probably the last TV Mr. Sex. I sincerely those, doubt it. Those days when you were attractive to the opposite sex. Yeah. 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 Of course, that was before TV, I believe, wasn't yeah. it? That was, uh... <laughs> when you were 14. But are you... Yeah. Um... Oh, no, you wouldn't have liked me at 14, Angus. Really? Even you wouldn't have liked me at 14. <laughs> um, I can't but uh, are you happy with that image? Is that something that you're keen to shrug off? Or? Um, no, no, I'm very happy for people to repeat it as often as possible on, <laughs> on as many programmes as possible. Uh, no, it's one of those things that it, it was just created uh, uh, by, the, yes, by one of the writers on Time Out. And it was picked up by the Nationals and they thought it was, uh, you know, they took it for, for real. A handy little catchphrase. And I'm very happy to go along with it. There was an yeah. interview with you, though. I don't know if it was an interview or just a kind of article about you in one of the new kind of raunchy women's mags that's out now called Ludus, I believe this one was. I've heard about this. The headline was, Have I Got Sex For You? <laughs> Which I don't think was a direct quote from you, was it? No, I don't remember <laughs> saying that. You know, your voice what? broke when you answered that one a little bit then. Yes, <laughs> a slight terror, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, what did it say? I can't... It I just, well, it's a load of old rubbish, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, one thing it does say, though, in there, is it says that it thinks that you're this almost unnatural, supernatural appeal you have uh, mm. for, well, members of both sexes, I assume, it claims is down to that mole that I can see here on your right cheek. That mole. <laughs> let's get in close on that mole. Can you get any closer? Let's have a look at it. Um, let's, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> but you, have you, now, is this something that's, that's dogged you in the past that people said, Angus, it's the mole? It's the mole. Uh, I, no one's ever drawn attention to it quite that closely. I'm like, <laughs> You know what, though? It's almost as good as being there, Angus. Yeah, I should, I should, maybe I should get some makeup on it. So uh, okay. well, it no, it's a Lindsay DePaul sort of mole. It's, it's obviously <laughs> working for you. Mm. It's a sort of a Cindy Crawford trademark. It's good of you to say so. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, I guess I'll move on. Listen, I know it's not really a, a, a lifelong ambition of yours, but you have offered to help us out this evening manning our live phone line, have you not? It was in the contract. It I was in to. the contract. Yeah. Uh, Angus will be answering some of your calls if you want to call in. We have telephonists outside as well taking the rest, and we will be doing looking through some of the uh, the Valentine calls and reading out yeah. the ones that we think are perhaps... And the faxes. And the well. faxes, yeah, mm -hmm. and picking up the ones that we think we can ridicule the most. Yes, which that will probably be most of them. Most of hopefully. them. So for now, anyway, we'll see him again shortly. For now, let's say thank you to Mr Angus Deedon. Go over there and man the phone line for us. Well, manfully. And as a kind of uh, homage to Angus now, the man who bestrides the world of news based comedy like a sumo wrestler, we will plod in an overweight but unmistakably Japanese way across to our very own Zoo News Desk. The news and the views at uh, just about ten past ten here. Uh, first of all, there's some good news and bad news. The bad news is that, uh, uh, revealed in an interview this week, Michael Jackson is suffering from a disease that is turning his skin white. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, that actually isn't the joke. That's the truth. <laughs> the good news is that Jim Davidson has the same disease, but it's turning his skin black. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, that was the most pathetic attempt at applause I've ever encountered. And deservedly so. The pound sunk to an all-time low this week. It was a guest on Kilroy. Uh, <laughs> actress Carrie Fisher and Human League frontman Phil Oakey of the Human League are to be married. Miss Fisher will in future be known as Carrie Oakey. <laughs> After a pensioner in Devon complained that he had found a condom in his tap water, a spokesman for the local water board blamed a cock-up at the reservoir. <laughs> 
former EastEnders star Gary McDonald has been fined for falsely claiming unemployment benefit. He was caught because of an oversight. The oversight uh, presumably being that he forgot that about 20 million people a week watch him on the programme while he's out there claiming the dole. <laughs> He's quoted as saying, I would have got away with it if only the show was on Channel 4. <laughs> when she starts paying income tax, it has been revealed that the Queen will officially be poorer than Mick Jagger. Her one consolation being that her new album is much, much better. <laughs> Carly Johnson, the four-year-old who fooled a panel of experts and sold one of her paintings for £295, is set to celebrate this weekend. She's going to crayon the town red. <laughs> I don't write the news, I just bring it to you. <laughs> After Rolf Harris's hit with Stairway to Heaven, celebrities are lining up to release other cover versions. Rumours have reached us that Roger de Courcy and Nookie Bear are doing Sympathy for the Devil. <laughs> Norman Wisdom is doing Black Sabbath's Paranoid. And Cliff Richard is doing one of his own numbers. <laughs> and finally, President Clinton has admitted that he may send troops to Bosnia. He has denied that troops is his daughter's nickname. <laughs> That's the end of the news, and thank heavens I hear you cry, because it's time now for some music. We do have great music on the show this evening, so prepare to implode with delight as we welcome a band all the way from Athens. That's Athens, Georgia, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only B-52.
They're getting so hot, we might have to take them off. The B-52s, ladies and gentlemen, with a song which is quite appropriate for this evening, I suppose. Hot mm. Max, it's, uh... <laughs> I'm with Angus Stephen, he has been manning the phone. We have phones outside, keep calling in. Any interesting messages? Yes, there's one for you there. To Wasmui from Noel in Northampton. Could you come upstairs, please? Stop watching JR because I've got something that he will never have. What does he mean, do you think? Series on BBC, perhaps? Um, <laughs> to, uh, to Dan the Interior here from Anon. Doesn't say what Anon's surname is, but uh, I love to pull your swag and tails. And that's uh, to, that's to, illegal in most of the country, isn't it? I think it probably is. This one's from Kevin, Kevin Morris in Brighton. Cookie, if I said steak, would you say fillet? <laughs> You and I think uh, Doctor Who, my love is like a TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside, and when it goes up and down, it makes a whoop whoop noise. <laughs> Can I just do one more? We've got one more here. Okay. Uh, this is in Wyme from Sarah from Edinburgh. She calls to say Alan, who works in accounts, deals in massive amounts. His figures look solemn, but one up his column, and it's not just his checks that will bounce. So, uh, <laughs> I've got the faintest idea of what she is talking about. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? We're going to go to commercial break? Paul. No, we're going to go to Paul Carr. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. He's been here two weeks in a row. That makes it his... Uh, second. His third. Here he is, <laughs> the people's philosopher, Mr Paul Carr. <laughs> My good sides. <laughs> right, listen, uh, this week I've been doing a bit of thinking, right? I, I think there comes a time in a man's life, right, when he's got to say, no more booze, no more swearing, no more curries. <laughs> Fortunately, that time hasn't come for me yet. You know, when it does, I'm ready. I, I, I've decided to try and give up a couple of the other bad habits, uh, smoking and masturbation. Right? <laughs> I find it very difficult, you know, cos, like, I'm a 20 a day man, you know, and I smoke like a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> I tried them, them nicotine patches, you know, but they taste bloody awful. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> so, you know, I said, the other day, right, I'd had a couple of drinks, you know, I had one or two, maybe 12, I don't know. Like, you know. <laughs> And I was about to vomit in the gutter, as any gentleman would. And uh, I come out, and as it happens, unbeknownst to me, a student happened to be riding by on his bike. <laughs> I just happened to puke in the basket on the front, you know, like a tea strainer, you know. And, and he got off and he said, Oh, look, you've ruined my notes. You've ruined my notes on the social implications of deprivation on the open mail. I said, do you know what you can do with your notes? Do you know what you can stick them? He said, no. I said, in your saddlebag, it's waterproof. <laughs> of course I didn't. I said, stick them up your arse, you bag of shite. <laughs> right. Do you know what I love? Do you know what I love? Do you know what I love? Kids. Do you know what you love, kids, eh? The things they say. Do you know what I mean? The things they say. My niece, right, I quotes with her the day, I said, come here, give your Uncle Paul a kiss and a cuddle. <laughs> Do you know what she said? She said, go away, you, you've got bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> She's very grown up for 16. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like women, you know, I do like women. I, I, it's not just beauty. It's not just beauty on the outside, it's on the inside. It's all okay. It's what the, the personality is like, you know. The, the spirituality, the human being, you know. <laughs> And if she's got a nice pair of tits, that's a bonus. <laughs> but I'm very open about sex, so I'm not scared to say, Cunnilingus. <laughs> I'll shout it, Cunnilingus! <laughs> I don't know what bleeding means, but I'll say it. <laughs> anyway, right. I had a brilliant time uh, Valentine's Day last year because I went to a restaurant with Julie. It was like right, posh. It was, uh, it was a dog's bollocks, you know. <laughs> it was called... It was called the dog's bollocks, actually. <laughs> it was French-like, you know. It was the bollock du vache or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, I split up with her, you know. But I'm hoping to get her back. I, I've, I've written a poem 
Right, it's quite, <laughs> quite emotional, this one. At the break of dawn, the dewdrops form. A thousand tears upon the lawn. I wake. Your lovely face is in my dreams. I break. My burning love suddenly screams. Why are you with Tony? <laughs> if I see you with him again, I'll kick his fucking head in. <laughs> I'll get him back. I'm going on. Good night. Mr Paul Carstairn, if you'd like to see him live, he'll be in pubs up and down the country. A young man with a lot of love to give. We're going to take a break. But first of all, love update. We've uh, got some yes, faxes. We are, and... we are taking faxes as well as uh, phone calls. This is uh, a measure of your sort of audience you get. Porridge bum, love your piles. <laughs> that means he loves her piles or he loves... That's her nickname, It pile. doesn't, doesn't even bear thinking Here's about Here's a romantic one. <clears throat> Car 9, could you pick up a Mr Hunt from Legends <laughs> Night Club in Elton and take him to Battersea? No, you made that one up, didn't you? I made it up. Uh, this is true, though. For this one's from uh, Janice in Coventry. Janice says, Brian B, if you don't come round my house right now, I'm going to get off with Steve Perriman instead. <laughs> yeah, that's a romantic uh, little message. Funny, isn't it? Isn't it? We're going to take a commercial break. In part two, we have Mark Thomas, uh, we have Top Models Jean-Claude, and I don't know, did I mention that we have Katie Lang on the show tonight? <laughs> don't go away, we'll be right back. Clerics and medics, surveyors and lawyers, airline pilots, police women, stunt men. Since 1824, we've looked after the investment, pension and life assurance needs of all kinds of professional people. Who are we? Clerical medical, of course. The choice of the professional. 1%, 2%, 3%. If more than one member of your family saves with TSB, you could all get a bonus. Ah, Mum, Dad, uh, how are your savings doing? All banks give you interest. Oh, be sensible. This is serious money. But no other bank or building society gives you and your family a bonus on top. Uh, Granny, you've tucked away a bit. What do you say? Family bonus, only from TSB, because we want you to say yes. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me love you. And all the time you knew it. I guess you always knew it. You made me happy. Sometimes. My hero. The aftershave, my Fabergé. 1993 Jaguars with comprehensive three-year warranties start from as little as £26,600. Test drive one now.
Welcome back. And remember, if you have a message or a love of any kind, the message at all that you'd like to share with us, the lines are still open. And as you can see, Angus Deaton has been taking them in with me here. Angus, what's the uh, latest uh, one you got? Dennis from Manchester says to Joyce, I want to have your babies. So he's uh, <laughs> a social worker. <laughs> um, and uh, Joe in Reading calls to say, Stuart, if you do uh, the breakfast tomorrow, Mr. Wibbly can get in the bird bath. <laughs> Yeah. That makes me feel quite queasy. Mm. And afterwards, perhaps they could have sexual intercourse. Perhaps they could, yeah. And Janice in Coventry has rung in again. She rang in just before the, uh, we went to the break. She says, Brian B didn't show up, Steve Perryman did the business. <laughs> he didn't waste time, did he? He didn't, did he? No. Uh, Kathy Baines in Oakhampton tells us, I like kebabs and I like hummus, but most of all, I want to shag Mark Thomas. <laughs> uh, which uh, would, would have worked beautifully had uh, Mark Thomas's parents decided to call themselves Thomas. First game. <laughs> but, ultimately, she can't necessarily. I can't promise she might get a shag out of him. I don't know, but uh, I can't promise one. But she can see him performing because he is next on this evening. Uh, here he is. Please welcome the wonderful Mr. Mark uh, Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> My brothers and sisters. Come budget day, Norman Lamont is going to stand up in Parliament and he's going to give his budget. He's going to be like every other Chancellor. He'll be standing there going, right, we're going we're gonna to borrow a bit from here, we're going to put a bit up here, we're going to increase this, we're going to turn this bit up, we're going to tighten our belts and we're going to be over the recession. We'll be there in the short while, don't worry, we're sorted. And you just think, when are we going to get an honest Chancellor of the Exchequer who will just stand there on budget day and just go, I don't know. I'm shit with figures, me. Yeah, my mum don't even trust me with the shopping money. <laughs> Norman Lamont, during the Sterling crisis, was sort of going, oh, right, if we spent 10 million billion and it's worth 2.4 fennigs, how many apples have I got left? <laughs> this is the only Chancellor who's going to calculate the budget using his chins as an abacus. <laughs> We join the exchange rate mechanism, we come out of it. We put the interest rates up, we take them down, we take them down a bit further. This is like the first freeform jazz hippie beatnik chancellor. It's like, don't shackle the pound, man. Let it go where it wants. <laughs> let it roam free, let it be a spirit. <laughs> we can only afford to save 12 coal pits, 12 pits. And no one wants the pits to shut, right? They had a demonstration to save the pits in Cheltenham. Now, the last time people gathered together en masse in Cheltenham, was to burn somebody at the stake. <laughs> and they gathered to demonstrate for the miners. They're all charging around, thousands of them, in barber jackets with Labradors straining at the leash. <laughs> he's rich, he's slime, he's Michael Hesseltine, Hesseltine. <laughs> they say they can only save 12 pits, but I bet you any money, like, they can actually save loads of the army that's up for the defence cuts. And you think, why do we need an army? What have we got in this country that anyone else would want? <laughs> what have we got that anyone wants? A apart from Salman Rushdie, and I love him, I like him, I want him to stay with us. If somebody invaded this country, they'd be charging up the beach on the south coast and there'd be a bloke there going, Oh, I suppose you come for the job then, have you? <laughs> if a foreign army is in Britain, you know for a fact they're not invading us, they're going somewhere else and they've just stopped for a piss break. <laughs> If we want to stop that, we just put signs around the coast saying no coach parties. They won't come in. We don't need an army. What we need is a people's militia. And we won't arm the people's militia with guns, because they go off and they hurt people. We'll arm them with kebabs. <laughs> you put a kebab in a bloke's hand, ready to fight. Kebab, come on in, easy, come on in, going off, easy, easy. <laughs> In the old Kent Road, the 999 services, name, address, with or without chilli sauce. <laughs> it's weird because, you know, this is a live television programme and there's certain words you're not allowed to say. And that's a bit awkward because I was actually going to talk about Judge John Prosser, who was the judge who fined a rapist £500 to pay for his victim's holiday. And you can't actually talk about that man without mentioning the words Bastard, arsehole, shit face, rat tossing, turd guzzling, wanking, ring hole, fuck pig. I tell you, I would. I would dearly love. I would dearly love to get hold of that man, shove a broom handle up his ass, and go, cheer up, mate, you got two weeks in Butlins coming to you. You see. This man has said, 
the, the going rate for rape is £500. Now, this presumes that all women are prostitutes. That's what he believes, which is crap. Judges are clients. That is a fact that we accept. That. <laughs> the lawyers actually said, Mark, you mustn't call Judge John Prosser a pile of shit just in case the shit sues. <laughs> this is the weird stuff about it, though. You think, where do they get these people? Where do they get the judges? I'll tell you where they get them. Oxford, Cambridge, male graduates. They shove them in a room. They wait till they develop Alzheimer's disease and become incontinent. It's like, oh, I've forgotten my name and shat my pants. Can I become a judge? Yeah, you're ready. Off you go. <laughs> How many High Court judges does it take to change a light bulb? Five. One to change the light bulb and four to go, whatever happened to the lamp wick? <laughs> you see, when they get the horse ripper, they're going to get the horse ripper, he'll go on trial, and the judge will be there going, ah, yes, well, the horse said, mm -hmm, but it probably meant yes. <laughs> well, he was begging for it, running round that paddock without even a saddle on, probably had high-heeled hooves, didn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is the weird thing, you see, what we obviously need are more women judges, that's what we need to stop this kind of stuff, and, uh... And... <laughs> Hang on a second. Guess what time of the month we put the rapists on trial? <laughs> Just before I go, I want to give a quick message to Judge John Prosser. If you're watching, I know where you live. <laughs> no, no. You kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> Come on, Thomas, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, he's got to rush off because he's actually he's a magistrate of the weekend. Um, now, I hope I didn't come across as too cynical at the beginning of the show about this whole Valentine's Day experience because now that we've been on air and we've been receiving your wonderful calls, it does remind me of a wonderful Valentine's Day a couple of years ago, back when I shared a flat with my old friend, the international male model and style terrorist, Jean-Claude Van Pleur. I can remember us sitting down after breakfast and opening all the wonderful cards and gifts we received and just generally feeling warmed and loved and it's a lovely memory. It's a beautiful memory. <laughs> Here's another one for me. And hey? it's, uh, this one's from BLT. Brilliant, BLT. Beach? Now, you're, not, you're getting Valentine's cards from sandwiches now. That's great. Yeah, Mr. Stuff, Popular. Mr. Popular, well done. Excellent. What's this one? To me? No, you. This is another one to me. It's from an SF. Do I know an SF? No, oh, no, that'd be Sarah Ferguson, that married woman who runs a knock-in shop for her dad in Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, no, it's stupid to me. SF, no, that'll be San Francisco. Everyone in San Francisco got together and they bought you that. Because you're so sudden popular. Is it my fault I've got 200 cards and you haven't had any this year? Is that my fault? Are you no, jealous? No, right, Are you no, envious? No, no, not a bit. Is it, is it because just like last year you haven't got any? Is that what the problem is? Well, hang on a minute. Funny you should say that because I have got two cards actually. And they were, yes, from last year. Go on, read them and weep. You didn't get go any on. last year? I did, these two. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go oh, on, no, on. I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I do yeah, forget. Yeah, I remember yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, was from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fangs that nice couple that won the off license. Lovely couple. And on close inspection, it's a Christmas card. The bastards! <laughs> and there was. Oh, uh, no, I remember this one as well. You were very proud of this one, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, go on, read that one, read that one. From Linda Evangelista. Yeah, go on, in the brackets, in the brackets. Top yeah. supermodel. That's the one. And this was the one, if I remember correctly, yeah, there you go, that had a Chiswick postmark, <laughs> which, if memory serves me correctly, is where your mother lives, and yeah. apparently has very similar handwriting to Linda Evangelista. There's a lot of Lindas in Chiswick. You're just jealous and I... I no, I'm not. It's just the whole bloody thing. It's just shallow, it's sad, it's childish, it lacks style. You, if you're stylish, you don't get cards like this. If, if you're a style merchant, these things don't happen. You don't get cards. It just doesn't happen. Oh, hello. Yeah, there you go. That'll be that bloke from upstairs who's always boring stuff. Who will it? Well, let him in. Let's see, Let's see who it is. Tone! <laughs> I can't believe it's Tone. Tony, before you say a word... Before you open that beautifully formed mouth of yours, just settle an argument here for us. You're, what's your standing on, on Valentine cards? Do you think they're useless or...? No, I, I, I just... I didn't give them much credence, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been drinking? You've been drinking, Tone! You're completely pissed! No, it's an impression. <laughs> Oh, oh, right, I see. Oh, guess what it is? What is it? What it's is it? Charles. Isn't it? Yes, everyone's it. doing it. Well, it's trendy that now. Is style. That is style. You've been auditioning. Do you it want doesn't... anything, or have you just come to the music? I'm going to do, do it again now. Uh, yes, I, I, I'd like to, uh, to borrow some uh, condoms. <laughs> style on style. They're, over, they're over there. Help yourself. They're next to the peeled grapes. There you go, mate. There you go. Fine, fine. All right, cheers. Yeah. Style. Hey, hey, got... hey. What, what, what's that? What, not enough? What, not big enough? What's now? What's happening? That's <laughs> oh, plenty, but uh, haven't you got any that haven't been used already? <laughs> 
Sorry, sorry no. 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 Come back Monday. Monday, the place will be a wash with them. Yeah, just w ring them out, wash them out. That'd be right. lovely. Go on. Hey, he's a lovely bird. I've seen him on the telly. Hold on a he second. Said, he's got style and you haven't. You have got something. You have got a gift here. Eh? There you go. There was one for you. Oh, I can't believe it. Be a little I'm present. accepting it by default. I've had a few myself, of course. I've had a heart-shaped teapot, some heart-shaped soaps. There's a heart-shaped cake. Everything beautiful. What have you got? Uh, where? It's a heart-shaped heart, really. <laughs> I can't believe that. Do you reckon, what is it, a human heart? I reckon it? it's human. You see, it's this sort of thing that just shallows and it's... Oh, it's I, I'm going to work. I've had enough of this. I'll tell you what, John. Mate, help us on with these wings, will you? Wings? Yeah. What are you doing? What do you want these for? I'm down the Arndale Shopping Centre. Remember when I was Santa Claus? Yeah, over Christmas period. Yeah, it was going down so well, they, uh, they've got me back as um, a cherub, funnily enough. You're down and... there this weekend, today, are you? <laughs> yeah, look, here you go. Here you go, look. What do you reckon? <laughs> That'll get them going, won't it? <laughs> Boys and girls will love that. There's something, uh, there's something hanging down here. There's something... What? What's, what, Can what's I just happening? push this in for you? There you are. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, that's not bad, is it? I like that. You know what? I don't take this the wrong way, but, it, but if I were you... But if I, won't, I, I won't let anyone sit on my lap with this, mate. No, 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 no you should. If I were you, I'd get a cab down there. You reckon? If, what, if you were me... If you were me... I see what you mean. It's style, isn't it? You've either got it... Or you haven't got it. Style. What an incredible uh, burst of applause for the male model there. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, normally, you probably know if you've watched the show before, we normally only have one music guest on the show, but when I heard that our next performer was in town, ladies and gentlemen, I had to have her. Yeah! And she said she'd do the show. Here she is this evening. She's performing with our house band, doing a track off the album. Uh, came out last year, did it? It was a great album, Ingenue. Here she is performing live. Please welcome The Sublime. Katie Lang!
Friday. Well done. I think they quite like it. Here's the album. I don't normally, I would not normally plug something on TV unless I paid a lot of money, but it's brilliant. Go out and get it. Katie Lang there, and everyone, and the house band. And Time now for a break. When we come back, we go transatlantic with Dennis Leary, showbiz gossip from It Happened in Hollywood, and more from the B-52s. Stay with us. <laughs> Of course, working here, we're the first to notice the change in people's behaviour. We're making more of these things than ever before. Young people can't afford to take chances these days. It seems they've got their heads screwed on, though. After all, I've never been so busy. Lovely bubbly. <laughs> the 93 Brit Awards. I fancy Fred. Me too, Brit. Your choice are price, 10 99 So you're going out and about after this, huh? Stand by on air five. Yep. Hey, let's take a closer look at the lights here on the evening where things are loosening up around the edge. Boat. A restaurant? A boat. We'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> That's it for me. See that boat down there? Yeah. Well, there's someone very special waiting. Ah, so you're going out about the boat. Yeah, yeah. Tourism Canada invites you to call this number for your free summer info pack and fly Air Canada to a world of possibilities. From the outback of Australia, you can see the lights in Paris. Or survey the hills of San Francisco from atop the Great Wall. From Mount Fuji, you can see the pyramids of Mexico. Through the eyes of a Buddha in Thailand, you can see the Thames rolling through London. And from the heartland of America, you can see the majesty of Rio you can see it all on United, with renowned international service spanning Asia, the Pacific, Latin America, and Europe. From London's Heathrow, more than 200 cities in the USA and 31 countries beyond. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Welcome back. It's only about another well, 12 minutes to go to get those love calls in. What's happening, Angus? Uh, well, we've got one from... Uh, it's from Sally to Mark Bradford in Peterborough. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you nearly as much as Jonathan Ross. That's, that's feeble. That's not very much at all, then, is it? Uh, I've got one here, which is people. nice. This is... I'm sorry, I tread all over your gag, <laughs> then. Um, from a barber in Hayward to John Howarth. He'd obviously proposed her day, and her answer is no. <laughs> Well, then she's put, only kidding, yes, yes, yes. So we've had our first uh, on air, but people just couldn't care less, obviously. So there you go. I've got another one here. Marcy, I love you, and that's from Marcy. Yes, yeah, so you made that one up. This is genuine. Uh, from Darren of Newcastle to Dawn Baby Oil Woods. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. It's a rather strange double-barrelled name to have, but there we are. Baby Oil Woods, though. From Ellen to Luke Harley, the message is, I like you. 
Something like, <laughs> <laughs> something, British, something like damning with faint praise. One final one here, one just in. Uh, Fluffy Bunny, I miss you very much. I never meant to hurt you. And that's from Professor Tomkinson at the Animal Research Centre. So, <laughs> I mean, this, is, this is a genuine one to, uh, to, to Paul Merton from an anonymous caller saying, spank me with wet celery again. <laughs> will be from uh, Alan Yentop, of course. Yeah, OK, yeah, we're going to yeah, so move on now. We'll yeah, check yeah, back well. with our Valentine's phone lines later. But now, for the views, the gossip, the chittle chattle and the chit chat from the hurly-burly that is Hollywood. Uh, here we go again, all the way, via satellite, to Bruce Urquhart and Larry Wise. <laughs> My name is Bruce Urquhart. And my name's Larry Wise, and welcome once again to... It, it happened, happened in Hollywood. <laughs> well, once again, we're bushed. Yo. We've been to the Valentine party of the year, and it was all aboard the love boat, and all the cast and crew were there, and it was hosted by the wonderful Oprah Winfrey and the pale but interesting Michael Jackson. Yes, that's nice. <laughs> and those two have been inseparable since that interview. Yes, that interview where Michael disclosed all, all about the skin disease, all about the beatings and his terrible childhood. Can you believe it? He seems so normal. Yes, so normal. <laughs> well, say what you like, but Michael can't have throw a party. The attention oh. to detail was exquisite. Do you oh. remember the little guy from Fantasy Island? You know, the one in the little white suit, tattooed? Do you remember him? Oh, I recall, yes. They're playing. They're playing. That's the one. <laughs> well, he was there, the little cutie, and he was firing little rubber suction darts at all the guests. Oh, that's nice. Oh, but huh. after five minutes, it became an annoyance, and he nearly took B Bette Midler's eye out with an arrow, and Peter Yushnoff locked him in the hold. Yes, and who has the key? Little old me. Oh, Larry, <laughs> you really are a tinker. Thank you. Well, <laughs> peeking through a porthole, I saw Eric Estrada. Oh, what was he, in chips? No, he was in the galley exposing himself to Ivana Trump. Oh, he wasn't on a police motorcycle? No, that came later. Oh, nice. Well, once again, Don Johnson was the star of the show. Oh, Don Johnson is a god. Oh, he's so wonderful. You know what he did? He rode up and down in a powerboat, firing flares and mooning at Spike Lee. <laughs> what a wag. Well, <laughs> things changed then for the worse. Oh, things God. took a terrible turn. A huge argument ensued over Steven Seagal's clam chowder. Oh, God. It was a little chalky, though. Well, yes, but then Axl Rose took it into his head to deflower the Golden Girls. And then Sinead O'Connor decided to deflower Axl Rose. Oh, my God. And then Sinead O'Connor tore up a picture of Phil Donahue and threw it on the poop deck. Oh, Waldo Baldo, get a life. Get a wig. Well, <laughs> as you probably know, tomorrow is Valentine's Day right across the UK. And we'd now like to take this opportunity to come out and show our undying love and gratification to our wives. Larry. Time out. C competition time. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> time out. Now, last week's Zaza Puzzler, okay, three choices. The answer was C. Jeff Hurst scored all three goals. Well done, Jeff. Well, I believe we have an answer in here, so let's have a little look in the brazen bucket. In we go. In we go. And the winner is Mr. Gary Bushel, 2976 Kurgenstrasse, Berlin, Deutschland über alles. Nice. <laughs> well done, Mr. Bushel. You'll be receiving Bruce and Larry's third in the series of workout videos, Cellulite City, It's Such a Pity. Brush, brush today, today, brush away, away brush your cellulite, cellulite away. away. Girls, it's really not that hard. No. Well, this week's competition is again a film question mm -hmm. and again a multiple choice question, so please listen carefully. Who starred opposite Laurence Olivier in the haunting film Cat Weasel Junction? Yes. Was it A, Vivian Lee? B, Vivian Westwood? Or C, Viv Richards? <laughs> See Bruce and Larry's new cookbook. Oh, yes. A Thousand Things to Do with Prunes. The book that makes you a regular guy. Tighten that tush. <laughs> oh. Please send your answers on a postcard once again to the usual address, but hey, don't forget your zip code. After all, we're not clairvoyant. Well, I'm a little psychic. Well, you would be. I always am. Now, okay. Well, that's about it. What are we going to do tonight, Bruce? I think we should go for a meal. Oh, too soon, mon ami. Oh, no, I hate that place. You can never get a table. Mind you, the head waiter has great buns. I beg your pardon? Little white rolls you serve on sticks? Oh, I see. What do you think I meant? I'm sorry, he's fat and slow. Well, that's all for us this week. It's ciao for now. My name is Bruce Urquhart. And my name's Morris Gibb. And, and you've, you've been watching <laughs> It Happened in Hollywood. Bye. Bye. Give me the money. Give me the fucking money. Don't be Thank you, Bruce and Larry, all the way from Los Angeles at great expense.
Now it's time for regular item that is fast becoming the most popular and talked about element on the show, so you can imagine how that makes me feel. He's an American and he has opinions that he's more than happy to share with us, so this week I asked Dennis Leary if he could give us his thoughts on our much-loved royal family without hyperventilating. Here he is now. Oh, Dennis. Two words, Jonathan, royal family, five more words, royal pain in my ass. What is up with these people? Fergie gets photographed topless with a Texas tycoon? So what? I think that should be a requirement. Marry into the royal family? Show us your tits. Parade through London in an open limousine, naked from the waist up, arrive naked in countries around the world and say, hi, I'm Princess Di, and these, of course, are my tits, okay? Male or female, doesn't matter. Prince Philip, pull out your pup. Why is everybody so shocked that a member of the royal family would have an affair? They're just normal people, just like you and me. They put on their 12,000 pound Versace camel hair collection riding pants one leg at a time. Let me get this straight. Princess Di is anorexic, bulimic, manic, depressive, and she wants to kill herself? Hmm. I wonder why. Taking a good look at the prince lately? Wow. Turn the lights down. Remember the guy who broke into Buckingham Palace, made it all the way into the queen's bedroom and then stopped? It wasn't because he got nervous, folks. He took one good look at the queen and went, Security! Security! How much does one family need? Palaces, castles, jewels, crowns, baubles, bangles, trinkets, scepters, polo ponies, and of course the world's largest cigarette lighter. Told you you should have put in a smoking section. Three words, folks. Taxes, 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 okay? Here in America, we got our own royal family, the Kennedys, and they don't put up with any of this British bullshit. They're not manic depressive, they're not anorexic, they're not bulimic, and they don't try to kill themselves. Because, of course, we take care of that part for them. <laughs> Dennis Leary there, he's trained as always. Uh, the show's almost over, we've got the Sunday papers in to see some of the Valentine's messages. What were the last of the phone call ones first, Angus? Uh, I wanted to, uh, there was a fax here saying, Marty, stop watching the zoo, come to bed and I'll give you your Valentine. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Good advice, these are the papers sure here, there's a... Uh, but... Uh, tiger, motorbike puppet, doesn't deserve such indulgences and loves you always. Someone who can't actually write in English, it seems. Mm, no. but there you go. Honey Bunny Bunny, never slip away, fluffy monster. It's all the same old stuff. We, we, really. there's, one here. there's one here. Earn five pounds per hour, work at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is probably all about we got time for, I guess, isn't it? Uh, one final thing, Angus, Valentine's Day for you tomorrow, something romantic. Uh, that's very kind of you. Sunday. Um, Lovely. <laughs> such an offer, I could barely repeat. Katie, what are you playing? Well, we'll see on the way out of the show. I think so. Yeah. Tony? Yes. <laughs> you couldn't do that Prince Stars impersonation for us again, could you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for the show. Next week we have Mr Danny DeVito here, as well as John Shuttleworth, Paul Calf, and Bernard Wright on. Taking to Valentine's Day now, we saw them performing their current single, Hot Pants, in the first part of the show. Now they're here with, well, a modern classic. <laughs> If you see a faded sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the Love Shack, Love Shack, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm heading down the highway Looking for the love, get away Heading for the love, yeah, yeah.